Hey guys, this is Top. Today we're going to look at a neat necromancer build that I came up with that uses the uh, dagger and axe main hands to fight pretty effectively. I haven't had a lot of opportunity to test this in tournaments yet. The footage here is however from one, but it does seem pretty promising for what I have played and I did test this for a while in some 1v1s against some guildmates and it seemed pretty good there. So let's get started. So here I start out with my dagger focus set in this 3v3 at the graveyard and this warrior here starts focusing on me. I'm using the runes of Rod Assume, which drop this AoE poison weakness field on me. And the field does have a very high proc chance, but a pretty long cooldown, which means that I'm able to use it pretty reliably to mitigate damage at the beginning of fights by stacking weakness on my opponent. Now this warrior is some sort of heavy boon stacker. He's popped his elite and some shouts, which have given him fury, uh, a huge might stack, and something even give him stability. So seeing this, I use my focus's spinal shivers ability to strip off those boons and do manage to pull off the really scary ones. At this point, I'm still being focused by the warrior and the thief, so I go ahead and I pop spectral armor to generate some life force pretty quick. Now, unfortunately, something strips the protection off of me pretty soon, and uh, that would have helped me quite a bit. I use the unholy feast ability on the axe set now to try and cripple my opponents, and pop my signet of the locust for some pretty significant healing. This buys me enough time and life force to pop into death shroud, which I then use to fear off the warrior, but the thief still manages to down me before I can interrupt him. At this point, for some reason, this enemy guardian uses his elite. Uh, Tome of Courage, so he can't stop me, and I do manage to get picked back up, and then we're able to clean up the remaining opponents here. Now, skipping forward a bit, I'm heading towards the quarry where one of my teammate players was calling for help. I do get a bit distracted by this warrior before I realize that oh, he's you know fully down and the node's being capped, so I head down towards the node. I sort of waste my life force on this death shroud here. I wanted to use the gap closing ability to jump forward, but he came towards me instead of away, so I didn't really do much besides chill him. Now the warrior knocks me down, so I use my stun break on spectral armor to get up and refill my life force. I then chain my consumed conditions heal into my signet of the locust to heal up pretty significantly before jumping onto the node to stop the neutralize. Uh, I do need to buy some time in this 1v3 until our engineer can get back, so I use the life transfer from my death shroud to sort of take their damage. I took the trait Dark Armor because abilities like the Shroud's Life Transfer, the Dagger's Siphon, and the Axe's Gassy Claws uh, allow me to get a pretty decent armor level while I'm channeling abilities, despite my otherwise glassy build. Now, our engineer tells me he's almost here, so I decide it's worthwhile to pop my Lich Form. I immediately use the, the Grim Spec Scepter ability on the ground below me to remove all the conditions that their Scepter Necro applied to me, and I start cutting backwards. The Lich Form hits like a truck with this much power, and the attacks pierce, so I'm able to burn down the already low thief, followed by this necromancer. Uh, I do go down, but uh, I'm able to attack this warrior who's uh, barely dead from the downstate, and uh, take him down as well, and then our engineer revives me. Overall, this build seems pretty solid to me. It has some pretty potent offensive ability with some neat tricks to improve survivability. Uh, the dagger now provides some pretty decent damage and life force generation after the boss is gotten, and the uh, heal from the siphon is pretty great. The axe damage is pretty good too, uh, where this build shines is in very frequent weapon swapping to maximize the use of both channeled abilities. Uh, doing so helps you maintain a pretty high DPS and reasonable armor level. Uh, you are a bit uh, vulnerable to interrupts, but I didn't find it too bad. Uh, the offhand abilities are pretty great too, with stability being moved over to a, uh, a boon instead of it being unremovable. Uh, the removal from the focus is pretty amazing. Uh, the dagger often also provides me with access to a long duration weakness to make managing direct damage dealers a little bit easier, as well as a bit of condition transfer, uh, which is probably one of the bigger weak points in this build. It doesn't have a lot of condition removal, but it, it did seem okay. Uh, a bit of group condition removal from your teammates, like a Shat Warrior or something, will go a long way towards making this build really competitive in fights against uh, really high, heavy condition users. But otherwise, you sort of want to avoid them fighting them anyway. Thanks for watching the video. I've uh, finally started playing the game a bit now that I've had my wedding done and I'm getting back into the swing of everyday life. Now that I can play, I'll start producing more regular content uh, for the channel. I also want to try reg streaming regularly, but that'll have to wait a week or so before I can get my internet sorted out at my new place. But uh, do subscribe and follow me to catch more quality Guild Wars 2 content. And I'll see you guys soon.